Hey guys, on this episode of Make It Real, we're going to be building Zarya's particle cannon from the game Overwatch. Now we're super excited about this project because it's the first Make It Real project that we're really focusing on aesthetics. We're going to make it look exactly like it does in the game, and it's going to work too. Now the big question is, how are we going to make it work? We can't exactly make it work just like it does in the game. I mean, what is that even? In the video game, it is a particle accelerator, which we can't exactly build in our garage. So instead, we're gonna have to use a non-fictional technology, something we have right here in the shop. As you guys know, I've had a CNC laser cutter for a few years now, and I've actually had quite a few extra laser tubes, which I've been meaning to make a laser bazooka out of for the longest time. I think this is the first time I mentioned it over two years ago. So, I ordered a few spare laser tubes for the laser cutter, just in case one, uh, one goes, I'm not dead in the water. And I also ordered a pair, so I'm going to attempt to build a laser bazooka. This CO2 laser is a class 4 industrial laser. It's rated at 80 watts, which is over 80,000 times as powerful as a standard laser pointer. Because it's an infrared laser, that means it's completely invisible to the naked eye. But that also means it's super efficient at cutting through things. Anyway, that's enough talking about it, let's show you what it can do. All right, so we've got all the components we need for building Zarya's particle accelerator. Now, we're actually powering the entire thing off of this small lithium polymer battery, but the power supply for the laser is AC, so we're actually gonna be using this power inverter to take DC to AC. And then this actually outputs up to 35,000 volts to the laser tube, which causes the laser to fire. So even though this laser tube puts out 80 watts of laser power, it actually takes over 400 watts of input power from this power supply here. So there's a lot of heat loss, which means we actually have to water cool the entire system. And to do that, we're using a frozen Q reservoir, which is actually used for uh, computer water cooling systems. But enough talking about it, let's fire up this laser. But first, a few words about safety. Safety, safe, and safeness. And we have Ian. All right, let's plug everything in. So 120 volt output to the high voltage power supply, and if you press this button here, we have power. All right, so as you can see, it's pretty powerful. And you can use it to cook marshmallows. Jordy? Okay, come on, Jordy. You're, you're above it. You're, you're above it, down. There you go. Yay! It's a pretty nice. Too long, too long. <laughs> you're not even cooked. <laughs> All right, so once we have this project built, I think it might actually be the most powerful infrared handheld laser ever made, at least by a hobbyist. Now, if you guys are big fans of laser projects, I encourage you to check out a channel called Styro Pyro. He's the king of lasers on YouTube, and he's actually made a 200 watt laser shotgun using blue laser modules. Now, from a numbers point of view, it might sound more powerful, 200 watts versus 80 watts, but because this is 80 watts of infrared power, I think it's actually more destructive, though we'd love to hear Styro Pyro's feedback on it in the comments below. Anyways, let's test it out. Are you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. <laughs> All right, so you guys may be wondering about our blatant disregard for laser safety in this video so far. Well, to be honest, we had originally had this plan to make this overcomplicated helmet where you actually look through a camera lens and see everything through a screen, which is probably the safest thing you can do. But then we realized normal safety glasses actually absorb infrared light as well which means they will protect your eyes, but not for very long. Let's take a look. So I'm just going to flash the laser real quick to see if the goggles protect from a quick reflection of infrared light. All right, so as you can see, the goggles are fine. They're a little burned, but at least the balloon didn't pop. Now, if you were to continue staring right at the laser through your safety goggles, you'd be in trouble. Let's see what happens. working pretty good guys. That is working pretty good. It would take over 10 seconds of staring directly into this 80 watt laser tube 
before you burn your eyes out. But that being said, we are actually gonna order some proper laser grade safety glasses, which actually look quite like normal safety glasses. Right? Yes. Whoa, check that out. So if you guys are interested in learning more about safety goggles and their effect with lasers, check out this video here by William. It's awesome. All right, so the big question is, how are we gonna make this laser tube look like Zarya's particle cannon? Well, I'm glad you asked. So one of the hardest parts about doing a project like this is getting an accurate 3D model of the actual gun. Luckily, someone on Thingiverse has already created one. They were able to extract the game files from Overwatch and create an STL model of the entire gun, which has over 30 individual pieces. So a big thank you to Chaos Cannon for creating this file and releasing it to the public on Thingiverse. Now the tricky part is all these STL files are individual and we actually have to assemble them together into the complete model of the gun. Which is why STL files suck. If this was actually made in say SolidWorks or something, you'd actually have an assembly file and you'd be able to mount all the files together using mating features. Whereas what we have to do with Mesh Mixer is actually place them all by hand, which took us uh, quite a few hours. Now that we have the gun assembled, we can actually import the components that we designed into the model. Now after we place our components inside the model, we can actually use a tool called Boolean Subtract to cut them out of the existing files. This is a rather processor-hungry operation, so it's a good thing we have the Origin PC to really chug through that data. With all the parts modified, we can now export each STL file and prepare them for printing. Now speaking of printing, this is going to take a lot of plastic. We initially did a few calculations with the original model from Thingiverse, and we found it's going to use over 17 kilograms of plastic, and that's only at a 15% fill density. That doesn't even take into account how long it's going to take to print. Luckily, we reached out to Lulzbot and told them about the project, and they were very happy to support us. So they actually sent us 30 kilograms of PETG plastic to use for this project. In addition to sending us 30 kilograms of premium PETG plastic, they also sent us a more extruder, which can print at a layer height of up to 1.2 millimeters. A normal 3D printer typically prints at around 0.25, which means to print Zarya's particle cannon, it would take over a thousand hours, but with a more extruder, it'd only take about 240. In addition to that, they also sent us two more TAS 6s, complete with more extruders, which means we're going to be able to print this entire thing in just a few days. We've already gotten started. In the next build video, we're hoping to finish this off and make it ready for the first test. All we have to do is finish 3D printing it, then we'll have to sand it, painting, add the electronics, probably do some more sanding, paint it again. Realize we used the wrong color, sand it again, and assembling the gun, and it'll be ready for the first test. To see that, click here when it comes out. But you know what? We wouldn't even be able to do this project if not for an audience like you. You guys are awesome. Thanks for subscribing, and stay tuned for the next video.